Coming up on the Globe Sports Corner, we'll see how the men's cross-country team is doing at this stage in the season. Coach Miller talks with Tanner Camp about their season starting soon, and Luke Rush looks back on the men's tennis team and their performance this past season. All that's coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome back to another episode of the Globe Sports Corner. My name is William Troyer. The Goshen College men's cross-country team is performing at a high level this season. They're ranked currently 17th in the country and are looking to go up throughout the rest of the season. Gabe Kermode with more on the story. Goshen College's men's cross-country team is ranked 17th in the nation coming to their first conference meet this Saturday. Cross-country coach Rustin Nice gives a little about how it feels to be nationally ranked. It feels pretty good, honestly. Like To be in the top 20 is where we were looking to be, so it feels like we're accomplishing the goals that we set out to. Maple Leafs standout runner Vincent Kombuja gives a little about how the team prepared for this season. Training hard and doing our workout well and recovering when we are supposed to be. So with the recovery stuff, it helps us be free from injury. And then like, training well and following the, the, like, all the workouts. We just needed to do a little bit extra work. So we changed our meet schedule a little bit to race some different teams. We changed our training schedule to be a little bit more specific in the summer so that we could start the season a little bit stronger and get ranked early. And, and that seemed to all work out. So um, it just comes from the work that the guys put in, a little bit of tweaking of our schedule. But I mean, mostly it's the thousands of miles they've put in over the last year that people don't see that is what's getting us to this position. 17th in the country is great, but there's always room for improvement. Coach Nice gives a little about what it's going to take to improve throughout the year. So we'll run our full squad. Our training is, we have a, a nice three-week block here where we can train pretty specifically for uh, some of our upcoming races. So we just plan to continue to train like we have been training. We're going to run full at our next meet, so we're looking to improve off of that. The men's cross-country team looks to improve their ranking as they go to Bethel University this Friday. I'm Gabe Kermode for Globe Sports. The team is back in action this Friday competing in the Bethel University Invitational. When we return, Tanner Camp will be with Coach Miller to talk about their upcoming season. That's coming up next on the Globe Sports Corner. I work for the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago. It's Goshen College. Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one -on -one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. I'm Tanner Camp, and to my left, I am with head coach Stephanie Miller of the Goshen College women's basketball team. Coach, thank you for coming down to the studio. You're welcome, Tanner. Thank you. So you now enter your ninth season with the Maple Leafs, and practices are now officially underway. So what do you think of the team at this point after you know going through a few practices and getting a good uh, feel for the team? Well, you know, at this time of year, you're always rusty. Everybody's just trying to get back in the groove. But I got to tell you, it's been a long time since I've felt the kind of energy and enthusiasm that gr the girls are bringing to the court day in and day out. Um, a lot of returners, which is really nice to see, but also some uh, an injection of energy with some of the new players that transfer and then the younger players as well. So, so far, the culture looks great, and uh, we've been off to a really good start. So, like I said, you know, ninth season with the team. Uh, you've had a lot of different teams with a lot of uh, experience and different play styles. Uh, what do you think makes this team different than other teams that you've coached in the past? This team's actually a little bit like uh, a, a couple of my teams from the past. So, I mean, that's a good sign. But uh, I think we're going to be a little bit more, you know, open court and a, and a little quicker in, in defensively and offensively in transition. Um, I also think that they like to play a little bit more freely in the first 10 seconds, and they do a little bit of better job reading each other, playing off of each other. Uh, you can see some of the experience kicking in where they just kind of know where each other is going to be. The cuts are a little bit more natural. I think the last couple years uh, there's been sort of a forced feel to the offense, and you can kind of see that that's a learning process. It takes kids time to develop. But in this particular group, I can see the pieces coming together to be a little bit more natural playing. I think that creates kind of a dangerous offense. 
So you were also the head coach of the team that made it to the NAIA semifinals back in 2015, 2016. So really successful year for the women's team. Uh, since then, has there been any change in terms of play style or tempo of offense or pressure on defense since that run? Yeah, actually, there was. I mean, the change that took place was just inexperience and trying to learn how to play together. So the change that you know immediately after that group uh, had vacated, we had a lot of young players that just didn't know the system. So our playbook was a little shortened, and we had to run a little bit less. Uh, they didn't really know how to play off each other as well. We had to just spend the last year or two uh, kind of getting that experience under their belt, so they knew what we were doing and what defensively and offensively how we were going to work together. This particular group. Um, even though there's an injection of new and enthusiastic young players, it definitely feels more seasoned and it kind of takes us back a few years to be able to play that first, like I said, that first initial jump up the court is more natural and playing off each other and less force. And I'm really excited about that because it's so much harder to defend for opponents when they, we don't, you know, if we don't know what we're going to do next because we're playing off of each other, they certainly can't be prepared for it either. So this team is bringing back quite a bit of talent in players like Allison Briggy, Claire O'Rourke, Mariah Rowe, so a lot of good upperclassmen. So what do you think or what do you think of their leadership in terms of training the, the new players and getting them ready for the season as they bring that great leadership quality? Oh, I love their leadership. Uh, that, that to me is probably the most exciting part. Uh, we've got some kids. We just actually had a, a retreat where we talked a little bit about leadership roles and how there's different roles and what everybody brings to the table. But uh, there's just kind of a natural feel to this group where everybody understands what roles they play, and, and it's rare that you get that. And I think that piece really lends itself well to a strong culture and a good quality chemistry on the floor. Um, but I'm really happy with the upperclassmen and the way they've worked together. Uh, Allison Priggy is a returning captain for us and has done a tremendous job in that leadership role, but also has been backed up by some young players coming in, uh, like Claire Rauch and, and Kiera Murph, our two additional captains that just joined us and bring a lot to the table as far as uh, leadership as well. So that, that piece I think I feel most comfortable with, and I'm really happy about how that's going to translate for us. So along with different style of offense, just our different team in general, there are also sometimes different messages that you deliver uh, to each team. Uh, what's the message that you want to tell your team as you get ready for your big first game on October 23rd? Well, they kind of probably already know the things I'm going to say because we've been saying them day in and day out. But for us, uh, one of our big things this year is to really work on, the, on fearlessness, the concept of be fearless in the things that you're doing. When you're coming off kind of a losing season or a season where you're trying to grow but can't get past that threshold uh, like we were in the last two seasons, you kind of have that nervousness in your mind like, can we get down to the final few minutes? Can we finish? And it takes a lot of fearless play and a lot of knowing that you know you trust yourself, you trust your coaches, you trust your teammates, and I'm really starting to see that develop. Uh, the other piece is just finishing. Um, we need to finish drills, we need to finish plays, we need to finish quarters, and that way we'll finish games. And that's kind of a big theme for us as well. So as I said, October 23rd, big day. It's the first game, and it's a home opener against 21st rank Aquinas College. You guys did beat them on their own floor last year. What are you going to tell your team right before uh, the tip-off for that game? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is try to calm them down because on day one, they're already hyped up, so you don't want to have too much nervous energy. Uh, but I will certainly remind them that Aquinas is coming into our gym knowing uh, that they took a hit from us last year that they were not expecting. Uh, we went out there with a great deal of confidence and they weren't expecting us to be able to play toe-to-toe -to -toe with them the way we did. I'm certain they're going to be looking for revenge on our home court. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be right, you know, quite ready for the product that we're bringing to the table this year either, and I think it'll be a really nice matchup, kind of a fun one for the opening vibe on that day. And we all really look forward to it. Well, Coach, once again, thank you so much for coming down to the studio. Thanks, Tanner. I appreciate it. When we come back, I will be with Luke Rush to talk some Goshen College men's tennis. That's coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College. Everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique, supportive community, right here in northern Indiana. Cutting-edge academics, real-world learning, and small, personalized classes make the difference all surrounded by world-class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit.
Back here on the Globe Sports Corner, we have senior GC tennis player Luke Rush. The Goshen College men's tennis team season came to an end in the Crossroads League semifinals. Luke, thank you so much for coming down to the studio. Of course, Tanner. Thanks for having me. So, as a four-year member of the Goshen College tennis team, um, how has your skills and mindset changed throughout the time that you've been here compared from this year to your first year here as a Maple Leaf? Definitely. So I think coming in as a first year college tennis player, it was amazing how different the college game is from the high school game. I remember being amazed, especially on the doubles court, I think I'm amazed by how much quicker and more aggressive the play has to be at the college level. And so I think in terms of uh, skills on the court, I definitely learned a lot and my, my gameplay has adapted quite a bit throughout the years. But then also just leadership and, and the mental aspect of the game. Um, being in a lot, uh, a very intense season that's pretty short and playing a lot of matches and also being a lot of close matches that end up having a lot of importance in how the team is going to do. Um, I've learned a lot in how to perform in big situations and improved a lot in that aspect too. So you also competed in the Crossroads League, which is a tough conference for basically every single sport. Um, how did you and your teammates, when you went up against these tough teams, how did you guys prepare for that, or how did your mindset change when you knew that you were going up against an opponent that was in the cro Crossroads League? Definitely. It's always fun to play teams in the Crossroads League just because we have those rivalries already built up with them. Um, and obviously, like you said, it's very ta there's talent all around, and so they're always really competitive matches. Um, it's also really fun playing a bunch of guys that are from Indiana because a lot of these guys are people that I ended up playing in high school or maybe even played on the same team with in high school. So it's fun to kind of meet up with some guys that I knew from before. Uh, in terms of preparation for matches, uh, in a practice we do a lot of match play. So we'll play, play some games, play tiebreakers, and try to get into those match situations to really make sure that we're ready when we're in the big situations in the middle of a match where it actually counts uh, that we're going to perform at our best. So we talk about the Crossroads League again. You guys had two really good years this year, lost in the semifinals to Indiana Wesleyan, and then last year uh, lost to Marion University, also in the semifinals, but still great performances in both really good seasons. Uh, what are your overall thoughts on the postseason runs that you guys made um, in your junior and senior year? Yeah, it, it was super fun to get to get back to back uh, first round conference conference tournament wins here, um, and unfortunately we ended up losing to the eventual tournament champion uh, both my junior and senior years, which is frustrating, but also maybe a, bit, a little bit rewarding knowing that that team ended up winning the whole tournament and will be going on to nationals. Um, it's, it's always super fun to go up against really talented teams like Indian Wesleyan and Marion and get a sense of what it's like to play at that next level. Um, and while I didn't get a chance to go to nationals, unfortunately, at all throughout my, my college career, it, it's really fun to play against some really high caliber teams and get some really good matches uh, that are very competitive against schools that are going on to compete with other schools all across the country. And give lots of credit to Evan Atkinson. He's done a really good job with the program since he's been here at Goshen. What was one of the big aspects that he brought to the team that you especially liked about uh, Coach Atkinson? Yeah, it was interesting. So he started right when I started as a freshman, which was a really good change. It was kind of weird because I got recruited a little bit uh, from the past coach, but then I'm really happy that I started with Coach Atkinson. And he's been really good, I think, in adding more focus to the team atmosphere, especially to practices, um, making sure that there's an objective in every drill that we're doing. And so we understand what the point of, of everything that we're doing in practice and understanding that there's always an objective and it's gonna help us in some specific way when we get to match play. Um, and he also just really creates a fun atmosphere on the team, uh, an atmosphere that is very competitive and where we always wanna win, but we understand the importance of having fun um, and just being, being a part of that team, team atmosphere. So looking back on your time here as a Maple Leaf, you've probably made lots of great memories, um, but if you could just uh, tell us some of your favorite memories that you've had during your run here uh, with Goshen and those memories that will last you a lifetime. Best memories, yeah. One really cool thing about my spot these past four years is that I've played a lot of doubles, which has meant I've been able to play with a lot of other, um, with a lot of teammates. And so that's been really fun getting to know a bunch of new guys uh, from all over the world that I've been able to play tennis with. Um, and something about just being on the same doubles team as somebody else gives you a chance to really get to know them on another level. So that's been really fun. Um, and I think just some big matches all around. Um, coming up with a big doubles win my sophomore year uh, against Marion was a ton of fun. Um, Marion's always really well known for being really good at doubles. And so being able to ha host them and come out and, and start off that match ahead was super fun. Um, beating Indiana Wesley in my freshman year in a really tight 5-4 uh, match at that point 
was really fun too. So I think, yeah, it just comes down to some really close matches, and, and it was really fun in, in matches throughout my four years to see guys play to their full potential and really see, see our team come together. And then finally, for incoming Maple Leafs who are be joining the tennis program, what is one piece of advice that you would give to them, both either on and off the court, that you would want to give them to have a great time here with the Maple Leaf tennis team? Yeah, I guess I would say enjoy, enjoy your time while you have it. The tennis season is always really short. It just rushes by. I can't believe that it's already done for the fourth time now. And then I would say that's true about college, too. It just flies by. As a senior now, we're already almost up to fall break, which means I'm a quarter of the way through senior year, which is pretty hard to fathom. Um, so I'd say enjoy it while you can. Uh, it's a great time to be in college and to be able to participate in collegiate athletics. So enjoy it while you're on the team. Well, Luke, thank you so much again for coming down to the studio and your dedication to Maple Leaf Athletics. For sure. Thanks for having me. When we come back, William Troyer will look ahead at your Maple Leafs in action this week. That's coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. Let's take a look at your Maple Leafs in action this week. On Wednesday, the Goshen College men's and women's tennis teams are home for makeup matches. They begin at 5 p.m. The women's volleyball team is hitting the road on Wednesday for a matchup against the Grace College Lancers. That one will begin at 7 p.m. The team is also in action on Friday and Saturday in Fort Wayne to compete in the Liz Lakowski Memorial Tournament at Indiana Tech. Also in action on Wednesday, the men's soccer team will be traveling to Spring Arbor University to take on the Cougars. That match begins at 7 p.m. They will also be on the road on Saturday taking on Huntington University with that match beginning at 4. The women's soccer team, they will be at home on Wednesday to square off against Spring Arbor. That begins at 7.30. The team will also be at home this Saturday for senior night taking on Huntington University with a kickoff set for 7.30. And finally, the men's and women's cross-country teams will be on the road on Friday, competing in the Bethel University Invitational. The women will begin at 5 and then followed by the men right after. That's going to do it for this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Be sure to check us out on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel at 91.1 The Globe, and check out our website at globeradio.org. We'll see you next time on the Globe Sports Corner.